Yo, hello there, good people. How are you doing today? Let's shake my face if you come from a distance. You see myself, I'm doing great. And as you can see, if you watched our previous episode, I think uh, my wood is also improving, you see? And it's good vibes, because every day is full of good vibes and love. Today, wonderful so together, we shall be spreading love. We need lots of love to the whole world. Peace, forgiveness, unity, and good vibes. And if you wonder how we intend on doing that, well, it's by reacting together to different types of videos. Videos that maybe you've never come across, good vibes videos, creepy, all the intentions of trying to understand how humans live in different parts of the world and unite. Straight out of Africa, I'm your host. Why 311H? It's lots of good vibes today. Watch till the end, hit the right button, and grab some snacks. It's going to be an interesting show, man. Good vibes out there. Let's dive in. Local scientists are releasing more information about a rare fish recently seen at Black's Beach. Researchers say this type of fish usually lives thousands of feet deep in the Pacific Ocean, and they don't know how or why this one ended up on our shore. News 8's Lamonica Peters tells us more about the unique fish and what you should do if you stumble across this, which you won't miss, at the beach. I spoke to the man who took the pictures of the fish, and he says initially he thought it was a jellyfish, but then he saw its mouth and he knew something was different. Scientists say it's about the size of a soccer ball. It's an angler fish called Pacific football fish. UC San Diego's Scripps Institution of Oceanography says there are only about 30 anglerfish like this one in museums and fish collections around the world. Some have also been caught in deep, deep water nets off of California, um, but also off Japan, um, even in uh, New Zealand and also in uh, Pap Papua New Guinea and uh, Indonesia. So all over the Pacific Ocean. Frable says another angler fish was spotted near Laguna Beach earlier this year, but it's been 20 years since an angler fish has been seen off the coast in the San Diego area. They're cruising around the deep ocean, uh, living in environments that are pretty much pitch black um, and, you know, very reminiscent of the scene from Finding Nemo. They have a large uh, lure on their head. So I can use this, our one from Del Mar that we do have here. They have this very big lure on their head that they can use to attract this glows. I mean, you can see the white there, and they use that to attract prey, swims up, and they have this big mouth, they can eat it. Anglerfish fossils date back 60 million years, but Frable says they don't know the age of this particular fish group. Jay Byler, the man credited for getting photos of the fish, says he was walking along the beach when he spotted it just before sunset. Frable says documenting these rare findings allows them to learn more about what's actually living in the depths of the ocean. Because they're so uncommonly found, Every single one of those um, provides valuable information, a data for, for studying the science of fishes, but also for learning more about our environment here in California. This particular Pacific football fish was not recovered from Black's Beach, and Frable believes the tide most likely carried it back out into the ocean. Frable says if you come across an unusual fish like this, don't touch it or try to take it home. He says you can reach out to the lifeguards or to Scripps Institution of Oceanography. To contact them, you can go to our website at cbsa.com and click the help button. Oh man, that's pretty interesting. You see, at first they thought that fish was a piranha, you see? And then you see this stuff here that was observing people while swimming. What stuff is this? I hear they are called duendes or something like that. Huh? Why does it look like it's bored or it's having some difficult thoughts? Hmm? Maybe it has had uh, some hard life or what do you think is going on? Or maybe today it just decided to chill and that's their normal face. You see, good people of us, have you ever seen these animals before from where you come from? Hey, yeah, myself, I see these are new creatures like uh, Ruprican or something like that. Well, anyway, it's good vibes, man. Yeah? Thanks for clicking and watching up to this part. Good vibes all the way. Peace and love. And this is how the flash flood arrives. Wait a minute, just wait for it. It's about to come. Floods, a lot of water. You see, water is very scary. Especially if you don't know how to swim. Wow, 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 water can be very scary. You see? A lot of water, and you see, like man was made to 
live on earth. You see, you don't have fins like fish. You see, you are just have food to walk on earth. And then you find yourself in a situation where you are just surrounded by water. You see, it can be very frightening, you see. When you are good with people. Thank you very much for watching. See, I love you all, guys. And I wish you good vibes, health, and uh, all the good stuff in life, you see. Because life is uh, all about love and uh, happiness and good vibes. And when everybody have what they need in life, they can be able to spread love, you see. And uh, it can just be full of good vibes. Just, just speak to yourself, you know. Please spread love from where you are, you see. And then we see this stuff here that looks like uh, some shadow of a humanoid big structure. What is that mean? Hmm. Crazy stuff, man. Some giant in the sky or what is that? Wow. So unbelievable. The more you study and learn about history, the more you learn that we have been lied to about everything by everyone. You've been lied to by your government, we've been lied to by our churches, we've been lied to by our teachers, and we've been lied to by our parents. Even if they didn't intend to lie to us, they still told us things that simply were not true and propagated the lies, either by complicity or by ignorance, but at the end of the day, the result is the same. And this is fueled in anger, as the people today have access to information. And we are learning that we have been lied to, not just for years or decades or centuries, but we have been lied to for millenniums. So people today are not just angry about the failures of the system that we are struggling under, they are angry about being manipulated by the powers that be throughout all of humanity's history. And do you know what? They know it. That's why there is such a hardline push to stop education. And when I say stop education, I mean stop the expansion of knowledge. Stop history from including both sides of the story. This is directly tied to this push to stop social media communications, especially international social media communications, because we might start learning from each other. We can get our own information now. We aren't limited to the approved television propaganda. If we start learning from one another and we start understanding one another, we might learn about the lies that we have been told year after year, decade after decade, century after century. We might stop obeying their orders and being their obedient servants. We might stop obeying their orders and dying in their useless war. We might learn such things as it was Muslims that defeated the Roman Empire and not those northern pagan tribes you've so often been told, and how it was Muslims coming to Europe that brought women's rights to Europe. They don't want you to know that the Crusaders were bloodthirsty killers that slaughtered innocent people by the millions who had never raised a sword to them. They don't want you to know about how when Muslims captured most of Europe, unlike the Christians, they never practiced conversion by the sword join our religion or die. In fact, when Muslims took Europe, they guaranteed the freedom of religion for all people. That's why when the Muslim Empire was eventually defeated in Europe, Christianity still dominated the European countries. Muslims had never forced conversion. They don't want you to know that it was Persians that first banned slavery and first guaranteed freedom of religion or that it was Persians who rebuilt the Temple of Solomon with the assistance of Egyptians, or how it was Persians that founded Greek philosophy, or how the Alamo was actually a war over slavery. Yeah, all those Texans were happy Mexicans until Mexico said they had to lose slavery, and suddenly they wanted into America. So why do they do this? It's all about control and ideology through false teachings of superiority. They need you to believe that European Christendom was so superior, even when evil was done under its banner, it was still somehow good. 
Even atrocities such as the Crusades were somehow excusable or understandable as they served a greater purpose. They don't want you to understand history for the expansion of knowledge, the betterment of yourself, or the betterment of humanity. They want you to worship their icons and thus be obedient to your masters, your masters of the church and your masters of the state. Knowledge threatens their power. They know that in the long term, when enough people have that knowledge, uh, their power will cease to exist. That forbidden fruit spoken of in Genesis in the Bible that Adam and Eve ate of, what was it? It was the tree of knowledge, knowledge of good and evil. The establishment holds itself as infallible as God, that their actions, no matter how insidious, are somehow righteous, and like that story of old, do not want you eating from that fruit of knowledge. These people are many things, but they are not stupid. The people who have manipulated humanity for thousands of years know exactly what they're doing. And of course, they will tell you that it has been for your own good. They're doing it because you're not capable of self-determination. You're not capable of ruling over your own life. It's rooted in ego and in greed and in lust and power. Their motivating principles are the very same things they preach are sins. But these people preach God in the absence of goodness, for they have none within them. Oh, good people of Earth, please let's be honest and driving, you see? What would you do if you were swimming and you saw a giant office swimming towards you? Oh my God. Oh, what would you do in such a situation? My self would be really surprised. You see, I don't even know what type of fish is that. I've never seen it. It's the first time uh, hearing even about it or seeing it here on this video, you see? Good people of Earth, from where you come from, are there such types of fish? Or fish, or uh, do you see them normally? You see? It's crazy. You see, from different parts of the world, there is different crazy and interesting stuff, man, you see? This world proves it to itself every day to be full of wonders. If we just uh, took good care of it and the environment, and not litter the water like we have seen in some video there where there was a lot of trash in the water then there could be some good vibes and you could understand a lot of things there about the nature about this water stuff you see and maybe we even come up with solutions to other problems that we didn't know we could be helped by these animals you see it's good vibes you see, when there was a story there, the baby of some guy that was swallowed by a fish, you see? And he was transported by that fish like some submarine type of uh, transportation. And he, then he was gone and uh, dropped on another place, you see? That means maybe these humans and animal stuff, if we connect and just relate to them well, we can do great stuff and understand things. There will be no need to invest so much in building machinery to go down there, you see? We would just go away there and, uh, yo, take us to Africa. We are from English lands, you tell where, take us to Africa, where it swallows you and it brings you direct down here, you see? And it's good vibes. Thanks for watching, man, for clicking up to this far and always leaving your comments. Please, good vibes to yourself, you see? And this good vibes human here and uh, this bad brain with him hide and seek. Hmm. And it's probably already what's up with this one. Oh, this is good vibes, man. Respect to everybody. Okay. I need somebody to explain how all of our grass is like it should be in the winter time, right? Everybody's grass. But then this yo yo over here has got summer grass. What the hell? How is this possible? Hmm. Is that normal? That neighbor just turns to water is uh, grass. This is what the inside of a tree looks like. Huh? I see. Uh -huh. And this is how squirrels see it, uh, good people of earth. You see? And today, thanks to these videos, we shall have to take a walk and uh, let's see some rough ride there inside the tree. 
And it feels like how it feels like to be a squirrel. You see, the squirrel sees all this interesting stuff and it has never told us. You see? That's why we should always connect with nature. You see how beautiful it is inside the tree? Oh, it looks the star good. seed and the star lineage are, are similar in the sense that a star seed is somebody that has a soul that originated from another star system, but they're having a human incarnation. A star lineage is the the lineage of where they came from originally. So if somebody, for instance, is from Lyra, uh, they have a Lyran star lineage. Uh, okay. So it's just a history of where they're from. What are some of the most common star lineages right here on planet Earth? Planet Earth is actually, uh, our genetics, our, our human genetics is actually a composite of, of many different star races who have come to visit Earth many and thousands and thousands of years ago. And so we have genetics from various systems. Uh, right now, there's many of us that have souls um, that come from other systems, but we've chosen to be here on Earth at this time. Uh, but the most common ones I see are Lyra Vega, Sirius, and Pleiades. Those will be the most three common. Fascinating. At any point, were you scared with them? No, not at all, because they emit such a loving energy that I felt very comfortable with, with the star people. Wow, you think that's a busy story? So I got a question for you today, and the question's this. Are you ready for the arrival of King Jesus? Are you ready, good people? Here's some crazy stuff you didn't know. Did you know that ancient Babylon is actually Iraq. And did you know that Noah, before Noah, all the way to Adam, never once during this time did it actually rain? And not just this, did you know that Abraham, of course we know that he married Sarah, and that little side, side blue over here, Hagar, but he actually married again and had tons of other kids besides Isaac and Ishmael? And did you know that Galatia and Ephesians and the seven books of Revelation and even more is actually all in modern day Turkey? And did you know that, where's the time like, here it is. Hey, my favorite one, check this out. Did you know, this is a, the coolest map ever because I got it upside down. Let's check this map out, it's literally Adam and Eve, all the way to where Jesus separates time, all the way to modern times when actually Trump became president. But what I want to show you in this cool map, by the way, it has all different types of um, empires from the uh, Persian Empire to the Greek Empire, the Roman Empire, the Chinese. But check this out. Did you know that was Noah? Noah's son, Shem, lived as long and lived during the same time as Abraham. This means Abraham could have asked Shem about the great flood and what happened. I'm about to start a series and dive deep into these time charts, genealogies, histories about the Bible. I want you to follow along. You might learn some cool stuff. I might learn some cool stuff. Make sure to like, follow, comment, and love you guys. Well, man, that's interesting. Good vibes to everybody. Hey, this, uh, this now, this, uh, this baking is on another whole level. You see, this looks like some uh, gas cooker. That these people are, uh, ha, this is a cake. Oh, you see, now this one is art using food. This is good vibes, man. Oh, this is interesting. Wonderful people of us. How do you call uh, this type of art now, you see? This is good vibes. It must have taken a lot of time. Even the place to write looks here and everything there looks good vibes. Oh, this is interesting. Crazy stuff all over, man. Huh? Could you make that one with the fruits? Hiking deep into the canyons of Turkey, I found this ancient tomb way up in the cliffs. I'll show a video inside the tomb next. Oh. This is called Newsbenders from 1968. This wasn't made by a bunch of truthers. This is BBC.
told you this. You're going to make this happen. No. We're going to make models much cheaper. Then we photograph the models. Fake news reels. Yeah, fake news reels. For the past ten years, people have been looking at our fake news reels and listening to our fake commentary. And they accept it for the truth. And you can do it. Stop a hundred people in the street. How many of them have actually seen a missile or a satellite? They, they, they're just told they exist and they believe it. And you're getting there. I knew you would. You didn't really believe there were all these things whizzing about up there, did you? Uh, Sputniks and rockets. <laughs> Astronauts crossing their legs for eight days. How long has this been going on? Since Hiroshima. And, and the H bomb, you mean? That doesn't work either. Right. Dirty. Very, very dirty. What was your first reaction? Relief. Oh, yes. Yes, it has to be relief. Now, you say you can put out what pictures you like on television. Doesn't anybody try to stop you? No, nobody wants to. 99.386% of the population wouldn't believe this conversation. And the rest are working for us. And they're the top minds, the really responsible people. Scare an ostrich, buries its head in the sand. You scare a hedgehog, it rolls itself up into a ball. When a woman's frightened, she goes out and buys herself a hat. Message. You mean you scare us?